Hey everybody, welcome to another Life Group video. My name's Anthony. My name is Fox. I'm the Connections Director. I'm the Production Manager. He produced. okay. Um, so today we are on the very first week of the new sermon series, Not the Same. We're looking at 2 Corinthians 5.17. Before we jump into the passage and get into the discussion questions, I want to ask you this question, Fox. Sure. What is your real name? No, uh, describe, <laughs> describe what it felt like receiving something brand new or to feel brand new as a Christian? Oh, man. Um, I can remember when I was a teenager, my very first car was mm. the hand-me-down of hand-me-downs cars. Yeah. Um, and then when I turned 18, my parents bought me a car, and it was brand new, fresh off the lot. It was a cheap old thing. Like, don't Don't get me wrong there, but... It was brand new, and it was mine, and it was spectacular. That feeling of ownership and the pride of owning this new thing yeah. uh, was far greater than having a beat-up old junker. Yeah. Uh, I might be too materialistic, but anytime I get like a new Apple product, because mm -hmm. the truth is that they like overspend on packaging for that experience mm -hmm. of brand newness to like really mean something so when you take apart that packaging and like the you know if you've ever bought an iphone the way like the suction of it comes mm -hmm. off like they do that all intentionally and again they overspend on that so that experience is like uh, a hallmark um so i really enjoy those little moments mm -hmm. Try not to make them happen too often. <laughs> Probably wise choice. Yeah, it can be pretty expensive. Um, but as far as becoming a Christian, I'm going to be honest. When I became a Christian, I had no idea that like saying a prayer is what made me a Christian. It was sure. just kind of a um, steady, habitual walk with Christ. Yeah, it was never a like this glorifying chorus in the clouds and sunlight and rays bursting down. Mm -hmm. It's It's yeah. a journey. It's a process. Yeah. So with that, go ahead and pause the video, turn to the group, and uh, share with one another what it's like to receive something brand new. Looking at the next section, focus on the passage. Question number one says this. Who has the promise to be a new creation? You know what will help answer this question, Fox? If I read the passage. And the passage says this in 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore... If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. So when we're talking about new things, there's a reason there. Uh, but who has that promise of being a new creation? It's anyone. Therefore, anyone who is a new creation. So that opportunity for you, opportunity for me. And actually, that makes me think of another scripture uh, that I've recently been kind of just like thinking on. And that's John 3, 36. And if my phone didn't freeze, I could pull it up faster. New Apple products. Uh-oh, I guess I need a new one. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. So this scripture is reminding us not only is the old passed away and the new is here, but this opportunity is open to... Everyone. Everyone. Anyone. Uh, take a moment, pause the video as a group, and talk about that. When you think of anyone, who are you already disqualifying? Who do you already think can't be redeemed? Who do you already think is too far gone to ever really turn their life over to God? Because what you might think may not be the way that God thinks about it. So take a moment, pause the video. All right, in the admit where you are section, question four asks, why is it so hard to live the Christian life daily? Which is really a, a really good question, and, and the wording in there suggests that you, you live it out. It's not mm -hmm. something that you do once an hour. It's not something you do yeah. once a day. It's not something you do a couple times a week. This is a, this is a daily, daily thing. Yeah. Um, and it's hard to live that way because you have to constantly keep pushing yourself to live that way. Mm -hmm. It's not something that I can take time out of my day and just jot down, oh, I checked it off, I lived a Christian life. It's not, that's not it. This is a daily journey, it's a continuous journey, and it's really, really difficult, um, especially when you're leading into uh, question four, or question five, ask what successes have you had in living your Christian life daily, and you may not see them 
all, all the time. Yeah. It's difficult to walk into work with a boss that doesn't like you and love them. It's difficult to to be surrounded by um, by things that are negative and pushing in on your life and to find joy in those things. Yeah. It's difficult to go through a season uh, where maybe you are sick. Uh, maybe you are um, in between jobs. Maybe you just had a divorce and to find joy and life in those things is really, really difficult. But the more that you do it, the more that you are in God's word, the more that you are living this out and practicing this out daily, the easier yeah. it becomes to find those things. I, as, as we're like bringing this up and talking about it, I'm realizing there's like sort of this mirror effect when it comes mm. to being an athlete, when it comes to being a professional, whatever. Sure. Um, you don't just get the paycheck and now you're set. That's right. it. You're it. That's you're now in the same way being mm-hmm. a Christian, you give your life to God. It's not boom. It's done. That's sure. it. Now you have to daily put in the work. If you yeah. talk to any professional athlete, anyone who's a gym rat or whatever, they'll tell you, like, you can't take a day off. Mm -hmm. You need to stay committed to this uh, continually. So when it says that we are a new creation, yes, that is true. You are new, but that's not the end of it. It it takes a a daily progression for us to continue to see that come to flourishing. Flourishing? Fruition. Fruition. Anyways, hit pause on the video and share share with the group of what of what it means to daily like commit to being a new creation. In the next section of interpret the passage, we're going to look at question number 6 and it says this, what is the difference between a new creation and a perfect creation? Uh, took this section from a commentary by David Guzik, and he says this, being a new creation doesn't mean that we are perfect. It means that we are changed and that we are being changed. He is a new creation who makes us a new creation. That is something of God alone can do in us. This isn't just turning over a new leaf or getting your act together, yet the life of a new creation is not something God does for us, but in us. Get that? So it's not like magic yeah. spell now you're a sir or a knight <laughs> but like you have to practice towards that mm-hmm. yet the life of a new creation is not so yep so we are told to put off the old man and to put on the new man which was created according to god in righteousness and true holiness that's from ephesians 4 22 to 24 so the difference between perfect and the difference between uh new is that you're not just finished you're not mm-hmm. just marked and done but you're progressively becoming this new creation you are a new creation god calls you it but now you've got to put the pedal to the metal rubber to the road no, yeah sayings they're so difficult what do you think fox what do you think i think that two? that it's it's a good analogy between being a new creation is being a newborn mm-hmm. uh when mm-hmm. when a baby is born yeah. they don't know how to walk mm-hmm. they don't know how to eat on their own they don't know how to speak yeah uh and the same thing for us uh we as people don't know how to walk with Christ. We don't know how to speak with Christ. We don't know how to do those things. We have to to learn those. We have Mm -hmm. to to study and we have to mimic and we have to do all the things that an infant does to learn how to be a human being. We have to learn how to be uh, a new creation in Christ. Um, That's good. We we are created that. We we are that born again. We are are that that new creation, Mm -hmm. but the process to become that is a lifelong endeavor. Yeah. So take a moment as a group, hit pause. Uh, go ahead and read Ephesians 4 together as well. Take a moment right there, verses 22 to 24, and talk about what that means to put off the old and to put on the new. Because God calls you new, but now what do we have to then in turn practice to be that new creation? In the Take the Passage into Your Life section, question 8 asks, What practical steps can you take tomorrow to be an ambassador for Jesus? Uh, The first thing that I will do is jump into the Word. Uh, Spend time with the Word. Spend time in your Bible. Mm -hmm. Um, That's the the unadulterated, unabridged version of God's plan for our life. Mm -hmm. Uh, And if we study that, then we can become more knowledgeable we can become more in tune with what christ wants for our lives and what what he wants to do through us yeah. uh, and secondly is find a partner um as with anything 
that is difficult. Finding a teammate, finding a partner um, is an immeasurable way to further your success, to guarantee your success, um, to further your chances for a win. Um, Quarterbacks are not quarterbacks without receivers. Like, right, you know, they, they can't have a touchdown pass without someone else catching the ball for them. Mm-hmm. So um, finding a partner, whether it's a, a friend, whether it's a pastor, uh, it doesn't really matter as long as you, you know that they are following uh, and, and working on becoming that perfect creation themselves. Um, yeah. Finding that partner and being in the Word. And thirdly is living it out, the practical application of these are the things that I've read. These are the things that I observed. How can I apply that to my own life? Um, take what you know, take what you learn, and just do it. And what's most important that you said at the beginning was getting it from God. Mm-hmm. Because Absolutely. being an ambassador for Jesus is not representing yourself, not claiming mm-hmm. your own name, but being a messenger for the King of Kings. And so in order to do that, we've got to be in the Word. We've got to be in community. We've got to be in constant prayer with Him so that we know the message that we're delivering is representing Him and not representing ourselves. Uh, So hit pause on the video and discuss more as a group. In the last section, Hear From God, question nine says, is there anyone in our lives who would be blessed to be made into a new creation in Christ? I just want you guys to take a moment and to pray. Pray for those people that don't yet know Christ, that aren't yet this new creation um, because they haven't met him yet. You know, it might have been some of the people you talked about earlier who you thought maybe they're just too far gone. Uh, never give up. God can do more than we think that he can because we think in our own human minds and we think some things are impossible. But with God, nothing's really impossible. So let this be a time where you as a group pray for the people in your lives um, that you would love to see come to know Christ. Thanks, Fox, for doing this with us. Thanks for having me. We will see you guys next week. Ta-ta.